This video is sponsored by Aura. This is the latest and greatest iPad from Apple, the 2022 iPad Pro with the M2 chip. When it comes to real world experience though, at least right now, it's not so different from what you get with the 2021 iPad with the M1 chip, which isn't very different at all from what you'd get with the 2020 iPad with the A12Z chip, which is very similar to the experience you get with the 20A. Hmm. It seems the iPad here has fallen into some sort of a pattern, almost just like Windows laptops. They come out with the same look, same body, but like a new graphics card and a new Intel chip every year, you know? But is that really true though? Like, can we actually compare the iPad Pro to Windows laptops? I mean, I know Apple has done it. Like, they don't even call this device a tablet anymore most of the time. And I mean, it does have a very powerful chip inside of it. A chip that's even more powerful than what you get with an iMac right now, which is an actual, actual computer. But is that what the iPad is as well? An actual computer, like a laptop? Like can it actually, actually handle all your laptop needs? Like browsing the web, photo editing, video editing, maybe gaming, if that's what you wanna do. Um, how does it multitask? Uh, how good is this display? And just all in all, what would the experience be like if you had the latest and greatest iPad Pro as your main computer? Well, I already know, so I'll tell you. And before we talk about power and performance and the iPad's current application situation in 2023, which is actually pretty exciting for the first time ever, and before we talk about the specific things that the M2 chip does for this particular iPad with these applications, well, to be true to this topic, we should talk about something more important first. Something that's gonna be more significant in the real world. See, if the iPad is your main computer, like your actual main getting everything done on device, then something you'll definitely be aware of is the fact that it's not like a regular computer or a laptop at all in the way it does things. And this is in large part because it's not running Windows or Mac OS, but it's running iPad OS. And if you're gonna be using the iPad as your main computing device, then you better love iPad OS, or at least know exactly what it is and what it's not. First, you should know, not too long ago, Apple made some optional adjustments to the way iPadOS works at its core. What I'm talking about mainly is Stage Manager. Turn this on and you'll get the most computery experience you can from the iPad. You can have up to four apps open on the same screen at once, um, which is fine. Um, it's not nice for your computer to have a limitation like this though. I mean, you can't have four on one screen and four on the other screen, but with a phone like the S23 Ultra and with just Samsung Dex in general, you can even have 10 at once on the screen, right? So that's a little disappointing. In the real world though, it's not that big a deal. You'll be able to realistically multitask as much as you want. At least that's been the case for me. Also, when stage manager is off, you have to deal with those phone only apps like Instagram that are annoying on the iPad. But with stage manager, you're on though those apps just behave themselves and they don't take up the full screen like they shouldn't have been doing in the first place although sometimes some apps might um, misbehave a little when you try to resize them but that doesn't happen so often at all not in my experience at least i'm also pretty sure that these are just bugs that'll be fixed soon Regardless of this though, and even if Stage Manager worked perfectly in the real world, well, I'm still not sure if I would properly use it in the real world. Like properly, properly. See, I already have been using it in the real world for a bit, but I just don't feel like it's really changed my experience with the iPad. Like it's cool that you can go to the MacBook and you can basically enable the same exact feature. And yes, that would make the lines even more blurry between the MacBook and the iPad if you really got into it. But long story short, the thing I found with the iPad Pro, even after using it for years, like since 2018, I'm really getting into it. Like I really love this device, but the thing I found is that it never really felt like a laptop. And even something like Stage Manager hasn't really changed that. In fact, with the way the iPad works, with Stage Manager off sometimes, and with the way it handles things like multitasking, mobile apps, and desktop apps, I've always felt, or rather known, that the iPad isn't just a tablet. But it's definitely not felt like a laptop though, like not exactly. Rather, it's somewhere between a big smartphone and a high-end MacBook. And it's good at certain tasks, but not others. But with its capability, these days, you kind of have to let it keep the title of computer. I mean, there's too many people doing too many great things with iPad Pros out there in many different fields. And there are many desktop computer apps being made available to the iPad as of recent, and there are even many more to come. But then the iPad still runs on iOS basically, and Instagram still looks like this, natively. So yeah, I think it's clear that the iPad has never really been a normal computer. So why do people keep bringing up this normal computer thing all the time? Well, for one, the iPad is way too powerful to be just a tablet. As far as power and performance goes, it's basically laptop level. Like it is laptop level. It has the M2 chip inside of it. 
You can play powerful games, you can edit 4K video easily, and now there are different apps to choose from, and we'll talk about that later. But basically, if you know what the older iPad Pros can do already, then you know that the M2 iPad Pro is an extremely powerful device. In fact, any benchmark will tell you that there are many, many, many laptops out there that aren't as powerful as the iPad Pro. But the thing is though, it still makes sense to this day for many people to get a laptop instead of an iPad, even if the benchmarks say it's a weaker computer. And the reason for this is because of the iPad's weakness as a computer. And what I'm talking about specifically, surprise, surprise, is the application situation that you get with the iPad Pro. But actually, maybe I shouldn't say that. Maybe I could have said that any other time in the iPad Pro's history, but not right now, and maybe not ever again moving forward. Why? Well, it's simply because of this little folder I have here. Do you by any chance recognize these applications? Half a decade ago, you could only hope to find any of these apps on the iPad. See, these are not iPad apps. Well, I guess they are now, um, but basically right now in 2023, we have Final Cut Pro, Logic Pro, DaVinci Resolve, Adobe Lightroom, Adobe Photoshop, and most importantly, we have definite proof that these big boy desktop apps can actually run on the iPad with the M1 and M2 chips. Most of these apps aren't compatible with the non-M something iPads. And the future of big boy apps probably won't be as well, um, but the point is more big boy apps will come to the iPad, or at least can come to the iPad. But that cam part has been the case for a while. See, this is what I've always meant when I've talked about the iPad's potential in every single iPad video that I've ever made. Like, it's just a skinny, thin device, but it packs a huge punch now with the M2 chip in the newest iPad. And just with the Apple Pencil and the fact that it's touchscreen in general, you could definitely argue that it's more versatile than the MacBook. And it has even more potential than you're probably thinking about. And it all comes down to the folders right here. Follow me for a sec. See, the iPad is a very powerful device with great performance and a great screen, with pretty good speakers and pretty great battery life, honestly, and with a pretty portable body. And see, these exact qualities I just mentioned are just the exact qualities needed to be a great number of devices and to excel in those areas as well. So for example, if we leave this folder and we go to my games folder, well, your experience with these apps here alone on the iPad can make your iPad feel like a portable console. And in theory, it should be powerful enough to get already have bigger board games on it that the iPhone doesn't have. But still though, if we leave this game and then this folder and then we go to this folder, well, your experience with these apps here can make your iPad feel like a mobile device with a really big screen. A big smartphone, if you will. Instagram still kind of sucks for iPad though. Um, I don't know what's wrong with them. But if we leave Instagram and then we leave this folder and we go to this folder right here, now that bigger screen can really come into play and the iPad can really give you the experience of a great multimedia device. The point I'm making here is that this skinny little tablet has so much potential and can wear many hats and look pretty good in all of them. So it could be a console or a big iPhone or a great multimedia device with that great screen and portable body. But now for the first time ever and with a folder like this, it looks like maybe there's nothing stopping the iPad from being a computer. Well, nothing except the fact that the computer app you might want might not be available for the iPad yet, because these are basically the only available computer apps for the iPad as of now, at least. But if these are all the apps you need, or you use another app like Premiere Pro or something, but you're willing to switch to an equivalent one here like Final Cut, then truthfully, truthfully, your iPad will be your computer. Not your secondary play computer device, but your primary computer because in the real world right now, it is more than capable. There's just one more thing though that might affect what I just said and might make you not want to make the iPad your primary computer. Or actually, maybe it might make you want it more depending on who you are and what you do exactly. What I'm referring to is the fact that yes, the iPad Pro now has apps like Final Cut Pro, which has the exact same name and logo as the Final Cut Pro you get on the MacBook. Um, but see, this Final Cut Pro does not exactly equal this Final Cut Pro. And as soon as you go inside the apps, I mean, you see the resemblance, but the iPad app is a little different. Like it's not a baby app or anything, but the UI and the way you do some things is just different, like I said. Especially when you're using the iPad like an iPad, without a mouse and keyboard, but with just its touchscreen and the Apple Pencil. Actually, for Final Cut Pro specifically, there are some things that the iPad lacks, but there are also some new and cool features that it has that isn't available on the MacBook, and probably never will. Now, I don't want to dive so deep into the Final Cut Pro app, um, that's not what this video is about specifically, but my point is, yes, it's great that the iPad now has MacBook apps, but I'd be lying to you if I told you that you can just throw away your MacBook and you can get the same exact app that you can on the MacBook on the iPad and you can get the same exact experience. Right now, that is not the case, and I'll just say things lean more in favor of the MacBook having just more comprehensive apps, or for lack of a better word, just better apps in general, at least more professional, at least, you know. 
But still though, when it comes to the application situation specifically, the iPad is in the best state it's ever been and it's bound to only get better from here. But even with that being the case, um, sadly, that's not enough for the iPad. Like, even if it got all the desktop apps, like every single MacBook desktop app, the iPad will still not be a very good computer in a way. Because it's not all about software, and when you take a look at the iPad, you see that it still has the hardware of a tablet. So, it's great that the iPad now has big boy video editing apps, just like the MacBook, but when I edit videos with my MacBook, uh, most of the time, I have an SSD drive plugged in. Actually, two SSDs most of the time. Oh, and an SD card, of course. Like, thank God it brought that back, man. That's actually pretty useful. Really makes for a seamless experience. But now, if we compare this experience to the one we get on the iPad, though, well, it's basically completely different. Um, yeah, the iPad does have a USB-C port, but that's it. One USB-C port, okay? You can't even charge the iPad and have an SSD plugged in at the same time without extra accessories or trying to use a dongle or whatever. Now, you can get the iPad in the highest storage configuration possible or just use a different storage system like a cloud system or something. But long story short, the ports and I.O. situation on the iPad is pretty pathetic for a laptop or a computer, you know? And I don't know exactly what I want them to do. Like, I don't know if I want a USB-C port on every single side of the iPad itself or anything. Actually, maybe that would be... Anyways, I don't know, but the port situation really reminds you that this is still a tablet. Oh, and speaking of, the iPad in general, even though it is a computer, it still feels like a tablet first, you know? Like the way you multitask and the fact that everything is touch-based first, and even though it does have mouse and keyboard support and it does handle things in a very cool and aesthetic way, with some apps, you still have to use the mouse like a finger, like you're actually touching the screen. And with some apps, you might just need to use your finger itself because your mouse can't do the exact thing you're trying to do, you know? Long story short, the iPad is not as good as most laptops when it comes to how good it is at doing traditional laptop computer things. But with that being said though, there are also many things that the iPad can do just as well as any other laptop or computer out there. Now this is probably the biggest case the iPad can make for being a computer. I mean, I know I use my laptop to make videos and do some creative work, but do you know what most people do on their laptops? I mean the singular thing and singular app that a lot of people use 98% of the time on their laptops? Well, it's insert browser app name here. Yeah, most people use their laptops and their desktops to browse the web. And specifically in a big boy way too. I mean desktop pages, not mobile pages. And this isn't a problem with the iPad. You can browse all the desktop pages you want with basically no problems. Now, I have run into some issues before um, in the life cycle of the iPad, but apart from sometimes where I have to treat the mouse as a finger because things are still touch-based instead of like computer click-based. Apart from that, everything's been good since a couple updates ago. In fact, you can play some web browser games that you might not have thought that you could. The only thing is though, that you have to be using Safari or another app that has or gains support for the full desktop browsing experience for all of this to be possible. Right now at least, most of them browse the web like a phone and not like a laptop or a computer. But with Safari, the iPad is basically equal to any MacBook when it comes to browsing the web. But that also means that technically your data is equally as much at risk as it would be with any MacBook or with any web browsing device in general. But it doesn't have to be though, and that's thanks to a service that will absolutely keep your data safe and make sure your questionable online activities remain a secret. The service I'm talking about, and coincidentally the sponsor of this video today, is called Aura. Now, have you ever gotten one of those annoying spam calls? Or have you ever had any of your passwords leaked or gone hacked on Instagram or Facebook or just had your identity stolen for a time? Well, don't be ashamed because every single one of these things have happened to me too. And I'm someone that thought I would never get hacked on Instagram. But the only reason why it happened to me in the past and the reason why it can still happen to you today is because I didn't and you don't have something protecting you. Or whatever's protecting you just isn't strong enough. And that's where Aura comes in. Ever wondered why you specifically keep getting those spam calls? Well, it's simple. It's because those spam people have your phone number. And once one spam organization has your phone number, all spam organizations have your phone number and they would like to keep in touch. But Aura won't let them. See, Aura goes through the entire internet and makes sure to alert you when your information is on any malicious list. And then it finds to take you off that list and to protect you from them. And I'm not just talking your phone number, but your credit card information, financial information in general, and even all your passwords as well. And since Aura tries to serve as your all-in-one internet protector, it also acts as your VPN, your antivirus, and even your personal digital vault and password manager. And it does all of those things very well. And it also does it all for a pretty cheap price. Less than what you pay for Netflix. But you don't have to pay anything though, not for the first two weeks at least. Because since you're my viewer right now, you get to try Aura for absolutely free of charge. 
just make sure to use my link in the description below and even if you're not normally the type to sign up for these kind of thingies well you probably should still get the free trial just to see if any of your current information is already compromised because honestly you never know until it's too late so yeah make sure to use that link in the description if you're interested and thank you to aura for sponsoring this video on the ipad now, something else the iPad now sort of equals the MacBook and traditional computers in that it didn't before is connecting to desktop monitors. Now, this is tricky because the iPad runs iPad OS, not Mac OS like the MacBook. So it's not like I'm saying it's exactly, exactly equal. But now, things fill up the entire display, unlike before. And you can even use multiple displays, I think, at least. Um, I think you should be able to. I've never actually done this myself. But I'm sure it does work now because I've seen videos and stuff. And also, honestly, what I said about Stage Manager before kind of goes out the window. Because first of all, that's my opinion. But also, with external monitors, Stage Manager starts to really shine. Just because it's the closest thing to the desktop experience that you can get with the iPad. And the normal iPad way just feels too touchy. Like, it wants to be a touchscreen so bad. And that's not really what you want when you're using a monitor. Now, what you do want, though, when you're using a monitor is mouse and keyboard support. And the iPad does not disappoint when it comes to that. Well, maybe with the non-Bluetooth mouses and keyboard that you have to like plug in a flash drive or like, you know, USB-A type thing because, you know, the iPad's poor situation is not so good, like I said before. But apart from that, the iPad is very, very usable and basically equal to a MacBook in this arena. Basically, sort of, you know what I mean? And also, apart from the fact that the iPad can connect to external screens, it also has an exceptional display itself. A display that's better than about 95% of all laptops out there. I mean, I didn't actually do the math or anything, but I'm probably pretty accurate, considering there's an argument for the iPad's display being equal to or even better than the very best MacBook displays out there. Well, at least the 12.9-inch iPad Pro, because the 11-inch iPad Pro display is not on the same level. Still pretty good, though. But you know what piece of hardware is actually really good, though, on the iPad? Well, it's the speakers. Now, they're not better than the MacBook speakers or anything. But damn, they're just close enough for me to know that they're better than many, many laptop speakers out there. Since we know that the MacBook Pros have better speakers than about 99.9% .9 of all laptops available right now. So, just all in all, and long story short, just know that the iPad isn't an inferior device objectively, and it can go toe-to-toe -to -toe with every and any laptop in the world when it comes to certain things. But that's not all the iPad is capable of though, and the best the iPad can do isn't just keep up with regular regular laptops out there, but at the iPad's best, it's actually better than traditional laptops absolutely. Or at least it can do some things that traditional laptops simply can't, or just can't do as well. Like for example, reading. I mean, you can read at your laptop, but you kind of have to do it formally on a desk or on your lap sitting down. It's not really fun to casually read in comfortable positions with the laptop. And the bigger, more powerful it is, the worse. Now, maybe this doesn't apply to like two-in-ones, but even laptops as skinny as the MacBook Air just aren't the best for stuff like this. Now, with the iPad, however, reading is a great experience. I mean, it's a tablet after all, and just because of that alone, you can read basically anywhere in any position more comfortably. And that's not even all that makes reading a better experience though. And that's not all the iPad is better at compared to the MacBook overall. Because one of the strongest cases you can make for the iPad over the MacBook, and not just for reading and being able to highlight text, but for being able to do many, many things that all MacBooks and most laptops can't. Of course, what I'm referring to is the Apple Pencil. I'm talking the second generation Apple Pencil to be specific, uh, just to be clear. This is the best stylus in the world, like the best stylus I've used at least. And with this, the iPad Pro can turn into something the MacBook can't and probably won't ever be able to, and that's a notebook or a writing device. So if you're someone that needs or just wants to write, like physically write, not type, like if you're a student or something that's taking maybe a math class where you need to write equations, well, the iPad just has a better chance of being your all-in-one device compared to your MacBook. Because the iPad can at least attempt to do almost everything you need the MacBook for. But the MacBook and other laptops that aren't surfaces or two-in-ones, they simply have no way of competing against the iPad here. I'd even argue that the surfaces and the two-in-ones don't even compete with the iPad and the Apple Pencil when it comes to natural handwriting. The iPad is simply the best. Plus with the M2 iPad specifically, now you have hovering capabilities that you can even make use of in other non-note taking apps. Now if you're an artist though, and what you want to do isn't to take notes exactly, but instead to draw and to paint and to, you know, make art, then the same exact thing applies. Maybe even more so actually, because there are many, many, many artists that swear by the Apple Pencil and the Procreate app and use it to create some exceptional stuff that you just won't be able to do with the same manual, hand-drawn way on even the most powerful MacBook with something like Photoshop or something. 
Long story short, and just all in all, the iPad is not a normal device. I mean, even if you argue that it is a computer now, and you have a pretty good argument to make now, you know, with the computer power and computer apps, but even if we do agree and we do say the iPad is a computer, well, I think we also have to agree that it's a pretty unorthodox computer at that, you know? And you basically watched the whole video now, so you basically experienced what it's like to use the M2 iPad Pro as your primary computing device. So that means you should know whether the iPad is perfect for you, just manageable for you, or maybe what you need is an orthodox laptop with like ports and all, you know, for your computing needs. And then maybe the iPad is not quite the best option for you. But you know, I think I can say now that the present moment in 2023 right now as I'm making this video, at least, that the iPad is an option, at least. And with the unorthodox advantages you get with it, and with it starting at $800 with the M2 chip, I can really see a lot of people picking up the iPad over some more traditional options available and using it as their main device. But in my mind, these type of people will be of the unorthodox type, you know, doing their work in unorthodox ways with an unorthodox computer. And in my opinion, that's exactly what the iPad is now. But that's just my opinion though. You should let me know what you think of the iPad Pro these days in the comment section below. You should like the video if you like the video. Subscribe if and only if you'd like to see more content like this. And um, thank you so much for watching to the end and I'll see you next time. Bye-bye.